In this video, I'll show you how to join a table to a feature class in ArcMap so you can map data from that table. I'm starting off with a table that's left over from the pivot table demo in the last video. And essentially, I want to export these columns for the study city and then the column way over on the end for the grand total of students that have studied within that study city. And because I don't want any of these other columns in between and I want to keep my table file as simple as possible, I'm going to start a new file and then copy and paste these columns into that new file. So I'm going to come up here and say new, I'll make a new blank workbook, create that. And then I'm going to come back to my old one and grab this column and copy and paste that into column A on my new document. And then come back and copy and paste the grand total column into my new document. ArcMap can now read Excel files and can join from Excel files, but need to make sure that I save my file with a name that I can recognize once I get into Arc Catalog. And because we'll actually be importing the worksheet as opposed to the entire workbook, I'm just going to make sure to rename the sheet one student data. And that way it'll be obvious to me that this is the worksheet that I'm looking for in Arc Catalog. I'm also just going to make sure that this column is formatted as a number. So I'll come in here to Format Cells, and I'm just going to change that to Number. I don't need any decimal places, so I'll hit zero. But that way I know that ArcMap will be interpreting this as a number. And then this column over here, I'll look at format cells and just make sure that it's formatting that as text. Okay. So now when I go and save this file as an Excel workbook, I can come over to ArcMap. I want to make sure to close that Excel sheet so it's not open at the same time as I'm trying to deal with it when I'm in ArcMap. So I'm just going to come back to it and close that, and I'll close the other sheet too. And then back over in ArcMap, I can import that Excel sheet. Here it is, Demo Sheet. I can add that. And then it's going to ask which of those worksheets I want to add. I'll say Student Data and Add. The table of contents will automatically switch over to this list by source view when you add a table because the table isn't visible on your map and so the only place that it can be visible is listed under the source. If we toggle back over to list by drawing order you don't see that table. But here's the table and list by source and we can right click and say open. And here's our table with headers study city and grand total. You see it right there. And there's also this grand total list down at the bottom. It won't actually use that when we join, but it shouldn't screw anything up to just have it sitting there. So in order to join that data to our city points, and you can see that the city points have a column in here with name, and that column is associated with the study city name in our table. You need to make sure that the attributes in the fields that you're using to join the two tables together are exactly the same. If there's any discrepancy, ARC won't know which records to join together. And so again, it's important to make sure that the attributes are exactly the same and also that they're formatted exactly the same way. So both of these columns in this case are formatted as text. I can close those tables. And now to actually perform the join, I need to right click on the feature class that I'm going to be joining the information to. So I'm right clicking on the geographic information, and that's these city points. I'll right click there, and then come down to joins and relates, and hit join. Then I want to select the field in this layer that the join will be based on, and that's going to be the name of the city. I'm going to choose the table to join this layer to, and that's going to be the student data table that we've got right here. And then finally choose the field in the table to base the join on. And it's automatically selected study city because it's the only field in this table that has that same text formatting as the name field here. And ARC is pretty good at making a guess as to which field you want to join to, but it's always good to double check that. Finally, we'll keep all the records, so there'll still be a point there, even if there isn't any information in this student data spreadsheet to coordinate with that city, there'll still be a point there, I won't just get rid of it. And we'll hit OK. So now ideally, if we right click on the city points and go to the attribute table, we'll get a new attribute table with the study city and grand total columns in it. That didn't work, and as you can see, joining can sometimes be a finicky process. So I think what was wrong that didn't allow that join to happen, if we go and open up that table, is that the labels for these column headers were too long. ArcMap tables are all based on this DBF format where column headers have to be eight characters or less and they also can't have any spaces in them. And so I think that's probably screwing up the way that it's trying to join this table to the feature class. So let's go back to So let's go back to Excel and change those column tab So let's go back to Excel and change those column headings and then come back and see if it works better. And I do this just as an example so you can see why some of these problems might happen. I'll close that and I'm going to remove the table and now come back to Excel. 
So now here we are back in our Excel sheet. I'm just going to change this to city, so that'll be eight characters or less with no spaces, and then total. Hopefully that'll work. I'll hit save, and now we can go back to ARC and re-import this table. So here we are back in ARC. I'll add data, get the student data worksheet, add that on. When we open it up, it should have those revised table headers. You can see it's just city and total. And let's try this join again. So first of all, go to join and relates. It doesn't have any joins left on there because we removed the table that it was using to join to. So we'll just hit join, select name. It's going to be joining to student data and the city field in that table. We'll keep all the records, hit OK. And hopefully this time it will have worked. You can see it didn't calculate any students as going to these cities right here, but then all the other cities, there was a total number of students that went to those. And we can now use that information to symbolize our map. So if we go to the symbology for this point cities layer, we can then go to quantities and say proportional symbols and symbolize based on total. And if we hit apply, you'll see proportional symbols for the sites around the world where Middlebury students were studying. And as we could expect, most of the students are in Middlebury. There's a lot of students in Ripton, quite a number of students over in Monterey and in Oakland, and then a number of other students around the world in various study abroad sites.